Cardinal Muller's Stark Warning to the Church Cardinal Muller served as the Prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, CDF, from his appointment by Pope Benedict XVI in 2012 until 2017. His role is considered of the greatest importance in the life of the Church second only to the Pope himself. In a recent interview, the 14th of November, 2022, the Cardinal expressed his serious concerns about the current state of the Church and made the following appeals and clarifications to the people of faith. Firstly, he emphasized, The best way we can help the Pope and the bishops is our prayer. We trust in Jesus, the Lord of the Church, who said to Simon, The rock on which he will build his Church, Mount 1618, before the Passion. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded that he may sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith will not be extinguished. And when you have converted, strengthen your brethren. LK 2232. He went on to make the following comments on papal infallibility. Infallibility is not a private quality, or the unconditional authority claimed by the megalomaniac autocrats of this world but a humble service to the Church in the name of her Lord Jesus Christ, who did not come, to be served, but to serve, and to lay down his life as a ransom for many. MK 1045 The personal opinions and life experiences of the reigning Pope are no more or less acceptable than those of any other educated or even a decent simple person. The Second Vatican Council explains in Lumen Gentium, once again in detail, what is meant by the infallibility of the Church in matters of faith and what is not. Dogmatic explanations can have the quality of infallibility if they follow in content from sacred scripture in the apostolic tradition of the Word of God, and if they are formally presented by the competent authority of the magisterium of the Pope and the bishops, with the assistance of the Holy Spirit, to believe as a truth revealed by God. However, they do not receive a new public revelation as part of the divine deposit of faith, depositum fidei. Lumen Gentium, 25. It is therefore completely absurd to think that a council or a pope could abolish an earlier dogma or, for example, stipulate that the nature of the sacrament of holy orders does not include the condition of the male sex of its recipient. In extreme cases, a pope could become a heretic as a private person and thus automatically lose his office if the contradiction to revelation and the dogmatic teaching of the Church is evident. It is not a question of limiting the infallibility of the Church in the full presentation of revelation since it owes itself to, to a charism of the Holy Spirit. But every pope must distinguish exactly between his task and himself as a private person. He must not impose his preferences on other Christians, just as the Chinese must study the Mao Bible or the wisdom of its great chairman. A pope or bishop or any other ecclesiastical superior must also not abuse the trust that is readily placed in him in a fraternal atmosphere in order to provide his incompetent or corrupt friends with ecclesiastical benefices. If there was a traitor among the apostles chosen by Jesus and even Peter denied Jesus in the course of the Passion, then we know that church ministers can also fail in history and present and abuse their office selfishly or narrowly. We even have an example in matters of faith of Paul resisting Peter in the face when he allowed himself a dangerous ambiguity in the truth of the gospel, Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. Our effective and effective attachment to the Pope and to our bishop or pastor has nothing to do with the unworthy personality cult of secular autocrats but is fraternal love for a fellow Christian who has been entrusted with a high office. He can also fail at this. That is why loving criticism fosters the Church more than servile hypocrisy. But the best way we can help the Pope and the bishops is our prayer. We trust in Jesus, the Lord of the Church who said to Simon, the rock on which he will build his church, Mount 1618, before the Passion. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded that he may sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith will not be extinguished. 
And when you have converted, strengthen your brethren. LK 2232. With regards to the current crisis related to the Synod, he stated, In Germany, it is an attempt to take possession of the Catholic institutions. The church tax and the building stock for an organization that has abandoned the Catholic faith in its essential elements and definitively abandoned the ground of revelation. The baptismal confession is replaced by the idol of pagan LGB ideology. Instead of looking up to the cross of Christ and carrying forward the victory flag of the risen one of humanity, the protagonists of the German Synod members raise the rainbow flag, which represents a public rejection of the Christian image of man. They have replaced the creed with the profession of idols of a neo-pagan religion. Once again, the words of the eminent philosopher Max Scheler are confirmed. Man either believes in God, or he believes in an idol. When Cardinal Marx, protagonist of the German Synodal Path, calls for not talking too much about God, and when he takes off his pectoral cross in the holy city of Jerusalem with, consideration, for the feelings of those of other faiths, thus denying the cross as a universal sign of salvation, then I prefer to stick with the Apostle Paul, who, was not ashamed of the Gospel, Rom 1.16, and who wrote to the Christians in Corinth, we. On the other hand, proclaim Christ crucified, a scandal for Jews, foolishness for the Gentiles, but God's power and wisdom for those called, Jews and Greeks alike. 1 Cor 123. Cardinal Muller went on to discuss the dominance of sexology in the church saying, Since, synodal themes, revolve exclusively and incessantly around sexuality as an egomaniacal source of pleasure, one has the impression that sexology has been declared the leading science and has therefore replaced theology based on revealed faith. The Holy See's declaration of the 21st of July 2022 puts it this way. The synodal path in Germany is not authorized to oblige bishops and faithful to accept new forms of leadership and new orientations of doctrine and morality. It can only be hoped that Pope Francis exercises his office and does not fall for the staged ritual of concern of tough ideologues or thinks that he can appease them with diplomacy and pious whispers of unity. Let us pray daily for the Pope and the bishops. God bless you and thank you for watching Mother and Refuge of the End Times.